And good morning, or evening, or afternoon, or whenever you're listening to this podcast. This is a live Mix LR broadcast this morning from Learn for Life News. It is Thursday, the 15th of November, 2012. This morning, we'll be looking at independent learning, coding, social learning, and we'll have a go spot as usual. Now, interestingly enough, one of the things I came across today was the MIT Technology Review. And this uh, particular story has been very current in the last few weeks. It's Nicholas Negroponte and one laptop per child. And he's talking in uh, MTech Preview, the MIT Technology Review, and he talks about uh, why he hopes kids in Ethiopia can teach the rest of us something profound about education. If you want to get all the, the links for this particular broadcast, they are on bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y forward slash L for L News 15 hyphen 11 hyphen 2012. And this particular one is bit.ly, forward slash OLPC1. And Negroponte starts his article with a quote from Seymour Papert, computer scientist and pioneer in artificial intelligence. And he said, you cannot think about thinking unless you think about thinking about something. Does this apply to learning? Maybe not. He goes on to talk about the industrialized learning and created schools, and we need to measure the system's efficacy and each child's progress. But what we they really want to measure or what he would like to measure is curiosity, imagination, passion, creativity, and the ability to see things from multifarious points of view. But, of course, they're hard to measure, and especially hard to measure en masse. So it's very subjective in those measurements. Basically, his argument is we measure what a child knows, and from that we infer what a child has learned to learn. Um, if you think about Michael Gove's speech yesterday about proper exams, we might put that into context. Now, he says everyone gets into trouble when we think about uh, knowing as a surrogate for learning, which is quite an interesting viewpoint. He says we believe that rote learning is akin to physical exercise, good for their minds, and quite conveniently we can test whether the facts stuck like spaghetti to the wall. In some cases, knowledge is so drilled in that you know and hate a subject at the same time. And the article is very, very interesting. He talks about a particular project that's going on with the One Laptop Per Child, where they dropped a thousand, a thousand Motorola tablets on Ethiopia, a village in Ethiopia, where the kids were meant to try and find out for themselves by using those particular devices. They were taped up in boxes and they were left there. I don't quite believe that that is the context, but that's as near as you're going to get. And that, that particular article is very, very interesting because he, 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 he talks about within minutes, the kids had turned on the laptops and they're all powered by um, solar powered. They were able to take the solar power and charge these laptops. And after an amount of time, they were hoping that the children would teach themselves English. Well, the, the jury's still out. There is a second article I would like to draw people's attention to, and that's at device which is device, D-V-I-C-E dot com. And that bit.ly is forward slash O-L-P-C-2. And uh, that article looks at what happened next. And it also has a link to a very interesting blog by Dr. C. Scott Ananian called Nell's Tinkerbook in Omo. And he talks about the whole sort of backstory behind this and how they devised the specific uh, operating system for the laptops and uh, that's at bit.ly forward slash olpc3 and you can have a look at the uh, wiki at bit.ly forward slash underscore olpc4 and if you want to see the pdf with details of the operating system and the exact technical specifications and the thinking behind it and the algorithm that they used you can go to bit.ly forward slash OLPC6. And the particular backstory behind this is that they'd um, named the, the particular operating system NEL because it's part of a literacy project to get these kids to start speaking uh, English all on their own just by using laptops. He's, he's got this PDF called Growing Up With Nell, Narrative Interface for Literacy. And the abstract uh, is that Nell is a tablet-oriented education platform for children in the developing world. And he talks about it being... Um, a narrative interface, which is quite interesting. And it's it's all based on, or has a metaphorical grounding in, this book 
by Neil Stevenson called The Diamond Age, about a small girl in Ethiopia who learns with a tablet device, who, who learns how to speak. They're taking a narrative from this book and actually transplanting it into a developing country and seeing how it goes, how it runs. Fascinating, fascinating blogs. So I would go along to that, and though bitly for that is, if I can get to it, is... I haven't got it. I can't find it, but never mind. But go along to L4L News 15 11 2012. And that's the bitly for that. And as well as that this morning, we're going to look at another independent learning scenario uh, where Station KBOB in the States is a student iPad podcasting studio. And you can actually go along and hear their podcasts. It's fascinating to sort of hear them. And that is bitly forward slash podcast studio one and that's a little blog about how they set up this podcasting studio and a little video on youtube about behind the scenes of kbob and this doesn't surprise me in the least i've seen several schools in this country where junior school kids have started to podcast and it's embedded into the curriculum very well and you have drive time audio and radio like you have now and uh, very small sort of micro stations uh, for the parents and for the kids arriving in the morning and little uh, ways forward. What's really interesting about the setup is that they've put them all onto iPads, again laptops. The second link is Podcast Studio 2 and that's how to make a student iPod pod park podcasting studio a student ipad podcasting studio if i can get my teeth in this morning and that is a little blog on how they managed to plumb in through a mixer and out to audio boo all their podcasts and you can hear them if you go along to that link through itunes because they've got an automatic push out from audio boo to itunes as does this podcast when i've tidied it up a bit after i've done the live version now the next section is about coding and i've only got one link and that's codeavengers.com if you want to get your kids to be independent coders they can go along and code avengers asked me nicely if i would mention them because i didn't mention them in the last coding roundup and they run css lessons and HTML lessons and JavaScript lessons for people who've never coded before. So web native apps and go along to codeavengers.com and that's bit.ly forward slash codeavengers. And to finish off the broadcast today, because I'm not going to go too much into a long broadcast like I did yesterday on the Makers broadcast, but today we're going to look at the third section, which is about social learning. So it kind of wraps it all up, because this broadcast is about digital literacy, social learning, social media, ICT, and computer science, digital culture in the main, and education. I wanted to look at a couple of things that have just come out that are current. One is social learn from the Open University. Now, at the ALT conference a couple of years ago, there was the Vice Chancellor, Martin Bean, who said, the rise and rise of informal personal learning continues today. And he talks about social learn being an exciting new development from the OU. When I saw him speak a couple of years ago, and I'll try and put the link in on the on the uh, video, where he talked at the ALT conference, and actually it was a very good talk because he talked about all the different technologies and everything all the way up from the Middle Ages ages to the present day, how people describe the technology as, as, as not being as good as the last lot and how the, the, the whole of uh, civilization would go to hell in a handcar because uh, you had uh, biros or you had pens or you had, you know, palimpsests. Anyway, we can go all the way back. Social learn is a kind of way to pull you into uh, group learning and uh, read a bit of it. With the changes in higher education landscape, there has been a recent emergence in social learning, informal learning taking place on social platforms and within online communities. Users connect with OER, Open Education Resources, made freely available from across the web and collate for a holistic subject view of self-education. And so with the increase of use of third-party social media networking platforms across the web and subsequently the world, the ability to learn and collaborate with others, whether friends or absolute strangers, is now a reality. And the Open University has been at the forefront. So they've got this whole section on looking at learning paths. They have something called a virtual backpack. Uh, social networking tools, experimental learning recommendations, and they've got a lot of open content that they can do. And you've got links to different parts of videos on YouTube, and you can go along and see all that stuff and see how they're getting on with it. You can join up and uh, take tasters. Uh, it's bit.ly forward slash 
OU Social Learn. That's two L's, OU Social Learn. Go and have a look at that site. In tandem with that, here's um, a MOOC that, uh, called Coursera, and it's a course on e-learning and digital cultures. And this course, it's uh, at bit.ly, Coursera EDC, e-learning and digital cultures. It's uh, It's got some lecturers, Jeremy Knox, Sean Bain, Hamish McLeod, Jen Ross and Christine Sinclair. And they are running this th- uh, five week long course. The workload is three to five hours a week. It's uh, e-learning and digital cultures aimed at teachers, learning technologists and people with a general interest in education who want to deepen their understanding of what it means to teach and learn in the digital age. This course is about how digital cultures interact with learning cultures online and how our ideas about online education education are shaped through narratives or big stories about the relationship with, between people and technology. That's interesting. Now, that kind of ties up with Ethiopian la- um, tablets and the kids and narrative learning. Um, there seems to be some kind of um, you know, leitmotif running through today's show. So think about that. Think about joining that course. It looks quite interesting. I'm going to give it a go. I've signed up and I want to see how it evolves. The third and last bit in this section is Social Media and Education free ebook supported by Blocks, written by Ollie Bray. And Ollie Bray's blog is always wonderful. It's Ollie Bray, B R A Y dot typepad dot com. And his bitly is forward slash Ollie Bray social media. You can go along and have a look at the free social media and education enhancing learning and managing e-safety book that he has put together. You'll have to sort of subscribe and sign up for it. I subscribed, but I haven't received a copy yet. So I presume it's not out yet, Ollie. Hope it will be soon. Now, lastly, we have the Gove spot. Our our glorious leader again is uh, talking about... um, or being talked about by The Guardian, uh, his civil service cuts to hit non-white, disabled and older workers. This is a piece in The Guardian yesterday at about uh, quarter past seven. And uh, it's bit.ly forward slash Gove underscore bigotry. And uh, racial plans by Michael Gove to cut the Department of Education in half will result in a disproportionate number of redundancies among minority, ethnic, disabled and older staff leaked documents show. Now, this is uh, uh, quite interesting and quite ironic because um, he was talking to the head teachers conference yesterday about the phrase that he got from uh, President Bush's uh, speech writer of soft bigotry of low expectations, saying that uh, teachers in the context of teachers who do assessments on their own pupils are biased and they can be seen to be prejudiced against certain pupils. And lo and behold, what do we see? We see that his particular department, who who in a recent uh, survey that are very very unhappy most of them um are um had a, a performance management equalities review and around 214 civil servants or six percent of the staff described themselves as disabled while 1882 or 50 percent they were able-bodied nearly 40 percent 45 percent did not declare but 14.7 percent of staff labeled as giving an unsatisfactory performance are registered as disabled The report also shows that 35% of all staff described as managers are poor workers are over the age of 50. So, um, you know, it seems like they are for the chop. Um, I wonder if they carried out the assessment internally, because uh, otherwise they might be guilty of, uh, you know, the soft bigotry of low expectations. And I will leave that thought with you. Uh, as you make your way towards your classroom and get ready for the day ahead. And I wish you the very best. And I know you're all determined to get out there, really uh, progress your students' learning. And I wish you a lovely day ahead. Bye now.